Back for another one. Seatbelts just showed up. I don't know if you'll see that in the video before this one or after this one. Probably before. Yeah, should be before. Anyway, um, got a bunch of stuff going on that I'll explain later, but we are about to do the uh, balance shafts. The new bearings came in. Of course, I just shut the drawer. All right, let me grab these real quick. Boom. Courtesy of shop that. Got them here. So I already have one balance shaft in there, if you guys remember. I stuck this one in. I went to go put the other one in, and the bearing casing broke. So we're going to pull the old one out, replace that one. Well, actually, I should make sure it fits on the one that's already out first. Um, then we already got the tube in there. That's the first step. Um, and then like the book, I'll bring it up. It has the orientation in which they're supposed to sit. I don't think the left one really matters, but this right one has a timing mark on it right there. And then there's a gear we're going to put in here that we have to match up with that. I think it goes about like right there. And there's like another little thing that goes right here. I believe a chain tension that goes there. There's all types of stuff that needs to go in. So we'll start, uh, slamming things in. Squad. All right, so I got the book up here showing us how to do things, but I need to put new bearings. I was hoping it would show me how to do this, but it didn't. So there's that. And first things first, we can compare. So this is the old one, the broken one. You can see here where it snapped. I don't know if it's going to focus, but it snapped right there. And there's a bearing missing when I dropped it. Did you focus? There we go. And we got the new one here. Same same thing. Boom. And we'll just slide this over the uh it's gotta sit right here. To get it there, I mean and this kind of like snaps in to itself. So gives you a little bit of leeway, but once you get to where it's supposed to be, it's kind of uh don't want to bend it too much, but I guess I don't have much of an option here. It's scary. I do not want to break this. There we go. Boom. I believe that is correct. And I'll just Loop that up real good and we'll slide her on in. Okay, so we'll see how much of this we're gonna have to edit. But, um, so my lubricant here. It says to make sure it's level with the crankshaft once it's in there is what the instructions say. You can't even how you switch them up. What are you talking about? Maybe you can tell from no. See what the book means by that. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the intake one out. I can get a grip on it. There we go. Okay, see this one's nice and coated. All the bearings are there. We'll pop this off real quick. New one. Clip abruptly ends, my battery light just came on, so. Fair warning. Little by little. 
little. Dog hairs. Get some more lube on here. Towel. This one doesn't have like a plastic housing that slides through. You can see here on the end, that's where the uh, water, there's a bolt that goes in there and it holds a cog. And then that cog has a belt that runs to another cog that runs the water pump. And as I get another dog hair in here, Jesus. Anymore. Word. Alright. Anyway, back in we go. We'll see. We're gonna do the chains here next. So, get these gloves off, change his battery, and uh, change the TO. So it's not part of the steps here, but I threw in a tensioner. Had that sitting here in the bag. Just do a new uh, seal on this. They call it intermediate shaft. They said put a little bit of lube on it, toss it in. So we'll do that. I should have gloves on. Getting this stuff everywhere. Pretty simple, it's got a guide hole, and then, uh, wait a second. Oh yeah, okay, this goes. Okay, I'm dumb, so let me grab this. I love the picture of it, it was pointing to this for some reason. Now it makes more sense because I tried to put the sprocket on that does go on top of this here and it like it didn't sit right. So as you can not blurrily see, why is my, no wonder. Sorry if it looked blurry guys, I got a fingerprint on one. Wow, okay, much better. So. That's just where the pin goes, and this is an oil passage of some sort. And then on this, you can see there's the pin, and then like where that oil goes in. I'm, nothing wants to ever focus. So this pin will go down there, and then oil will be able to flow through. And then there's a shaft that goes on top of this, and I guess that this oil's that, so it keeps that lubricated. So, boom. Take this little guy, make sure the pin's in the pinhole. Doesn't want to sit too good. There we go, okay. And then, uh, where did the shaft go? And this is what goes on top of it. This guy right here. So this part of this one chain will go to here, and then this these other teeth go to this to so spin the balance shaft. And then there's a timing mark on this as well. Probably never show. You can kind of see it there on the tooth. That timing mark has to go like right between. I don't know if it's on the left side or right side of that one, but the book says it. I'm about to do it. We'll see. So I was kind of right, kind of wrong. I really don't know if we're gonna be able to see this. It's really hard to see, but on these two teeth right here, there's two timing marks. And so that one tooth that has a timing mark is already there for the balance shaft. We'll go right between these two. Can't mess it up. So it has nothing to do with the time mark on the front. See, that time mark's there. These other ones are right here. I know it was hard to see on camera, so I took a picture of it. You can see that timing mark, and then the two, it just sits in between there. So that's how that goes. 
Okay, so I went ahead and put the cog on. Let me grab flashlight again. There you go. Boom. So I put some pliers on this right here to hold it still. This is reverse thread, so you're tightening it towards you. Uh, yeah. Put the belt on both before you tighten it. The belt won't come off without the little one off. It's kind of annoying, but it works. She's in. Now I got a cover to put over the belt. And when assembling the water pump, you guys remember that video, I thought I was missing some screws. Well, this one and this one, um, you know, it looks like they're missing because the cover, the cover screws is what those are. So I'm going to take those out and then uh, throw the cover on. Cleaned up the uh, cover a little bit, got her on. Looking good. Now we'll get back to the chain side. We'll start, uh, we'll bring it up and see. I mean, the chain only goes one way, and I think it's three um, guides to go and one tensioner. I don't know. We'll see. As you guys know, learning as I go, book says. Make sure this timing mark is where that is, this timing mark where that is. Basically, almost lined up. Um, yeah, if you're reading through the book, you'll know there's no real point in explaining it right now. Unless you're trying to do this yourself, then, well, you got the two bottom markings and, and the single on this balance shaft, like right in between, uh, which puts the other timing mark there. And this one in the book looks like it's going towards the bolt, kinda. So. There's that. So let's take the chain, find the different colored ones. Okay, so we got a couple. I'm gonna assume it's like these two, maybe. This one and that one. So I did have to rotate it to the next mark. I know my light's probably a little bright, but I had. Where were we? Forward. So the orange mark was like over here somewhere, but I had to rotate it one because if you look in the picture, it actually shows the exact amount of links that will be discolored here. So you got like two discolored ones and then one, two discolored ones and then one. Actually, no, that one doesn't count because that's like the end link. But there's a discolored one here, and this discolored one lines up with another arrow that's on this. So let me bring that up a little closer for y'all. Mm -hmm. Boom, so this bottom one goes right, it looks like it at least. That one's lined up, that one's lined up. I'm gonna go with that. I think it's supposed to sag quite a bit. Maybe something like this. When it's all said and done, I think. Or sorry, I forgot I'm zoomed in. Something around like that, I'm not sure. But it says to put this tensioner in next, so. We'll see. All, right. All it says is install guide track and tighten arrows, but it doesn't say what side's the front of this. I'm assuming, yeah, because that's recessed for the holes. So. There. Definitely not P30. I did have to loosen this up, by the way, to get the chain through. That's just kind of chilling there right now. A little bit of a mess going on here, but it's, I had to put on the uh, all the chains basically. We're lock, we just lock this down with the tool. Basically, it just it goes through. You do that hand tight. This knurling matches the knurling on this. And you got a little piece, and this expands. Really simple to use. Next steps is to put in. This guy right here, boom, and then the one over here, to tension that. Uh, making sure this mis this colored one is down on this arrow, like I was saying earlier. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Now I'll show you guys what it looks like up close. As promised, here's a closer look. So these ones so far, these four have been the same. This is a bigger one, as you can kind of kind of tell maybe on camera. This is a bigger one. There's two bigger ones in the pack, and I think like five of the smaller ones. So, next up, it says to put in the chain tensioner. Goes right here. Tensions 
the chain. Um, measure, check adjustment again. The painted chain links arrows must line up with the marking things on the sprockets. All right, let's do it. So tomorrow, I'm gonna finish this up. I laid this other tensional. I was, I was like, why is this damn chain? Let me pull this out real quick. This thing is like extremely loose and I forgot that this tensioner like stacked on top of this one. So we're good. Um, this is in, it's a, I think 24 or 25 mil, something big. Uh, tighten that down good. I'm gonna tighten this thing back down. And then tomorrow we'll do the cam side and we'll be done. It's actually really easy. Uh, where are we at here? Boop, 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 boop. Uh, basically, you got two marks on your chain, one on each cam, and you got another, uh, you got an arrow right up in there. You kind of see that silver spot? Yeah, right there. So that'll be where the other chain goes there, the other link. Toss your tensioners in, and you're good to go. <laughs> it's pretty simple. It's a lot. I've been stressing out about doing this timing job for a while, and uh, it's actually really, really easy. I think this is easier than doing... Uh, like getting the cams all in all this is less nerve-wracking than than that that's i don't know this is actually pretty freaking simple so anybody out there that is scared of breaking your motor down because of doing the timing it's not bad really this whole thing isn't bad it's just time consuming as hell and you need to be able to stay organized and it's a lot of money in replacing parts like it's but everything really isn't and this is easy <laughs> Actually, pretty proud. I mean, we're not done yet. The motor's not run yet. The car, or the car's not run yet, but I'm pretty stoked. Um, get this done tomorrow. Wrap this up, and we can get the covers on. We can then put spark plugs in, coil packs, and start putting in all the accessories that go on the cover up there. And the only thing we'll be waiting on, motor-wise, we'll even be able to throw the actual belt on tomorrow. And the only thing we're waiting on, motor-wise, will be the ARP crank. Um, pulley bolt and once that's here and I can torque that down to 250 freaking foot pounds um, I'm gonna slap the trans on get the motor in and it's gonna be super simple to get the motor in especially now without that washer fluid reservoir which I still need to weigh but and we're there and then I'm just waiting on these seat brackets and the seat all the seat belt stuff all the seat stuff once we get that knocked out I mean it's just fluid that's the only thing left I think I need to order is I need to order braking fluid, or braking oil, regular oil, trans oil, diff oil. Actually, I think I have some diff oil up there still for the the front diff. I'm gonna have to order extra because I'm gonna change. You know, technically the trans is getting it's a used um, diff on the front. Well, not diff, buffle box, transfer case, what do you want to call it? Um, so because there is a new diff and all the new gears, I'm gonna have to kind of break that in as well as the engine with fluid changes and we got all types of brake bleeding I, I know I probably let way too much air into the system so I have to go out to a dirt road and slam on the brakes a bunch get the ABS to kick on to do all that I have to go through OBD 11 redo the throttle redo the I took a picture of it there's you need to go in and let the computer know that you mess with stuff so we can adjust for I guess the new chains um, I think it was like chain adjustment something procedure whole lot of things hopefully my battery's still good um but we did delete a bunch of things so we're at the code out ac code out freaking whatchamacallit the washer stuff we're at the turn off xds since we have a, a an lsd in the front now Bleed the brakes a bunch doesn't even get new front brake pads for this season new tires freaking and then all the time we're going to spend getting this dang hatch in. I need to. I haven't even looked into any of that yet. And then we're going to need adhesive. It's, it's going to need wrap. We're going to need roof wrap. This thing's going to need detailed so bad. Anyway, okay. So I've been ranting for like four minutes now. See you guys tomorrow. I'm going to do the rest. Yo, what is good? We are back at it. Ready to just... I, I'm ecstatic right now. I actually went ahead uh, off camera. Did a couple things. I put the cool packs on. I didn't put the spark plugs in because I want to rotate the motor around a couple times, but put all the cam max riders in. Got new hardware for those. Clean those up real nice. This thing with focus. You know, she's looking good. Clean up the coil packs. Threw the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, PCV plate on. 
Um, still gotta get that high pressure pump, but once all this is done and these covers are on, uh, maybe get to that tonight. If not, uh, Monday, tomorrow, I'm gonna spend editing. Finally gonna drop this build series come Monday. So, you guys are seeing her live still. The website should be live along with those. I'm gonna give out three pistons um, with shirts randomly. So, just remember that. Uh, what else did I do? Cleaned up some things, got the got this sitting a little bit better. Looks a lot more, uh, just making sure nothing was gonna hit. Got the, uh, whatchamacallit on there, the spring. Looking good, so top end looking great. Just need to put, uh, do, whatchamacallit, spark plugs, get those in. But for now, here we are, uh, and we're looking at here. So the cams aren't exactly at TDC, so you got the timing mark i mark there, and that needs to line up with that guy right there. And same over here, this one. Needs to line up with that one. So the way we do that, see that notch? You can, yeah, see that notch there. We got a tool that showed up today. I got this from FCP. And we'll be able to rotate this. Well, I'm not gonna do it just like this, but yeah. We'll rotate it, and then we'll get this locking. It's gonna be this one. This attaches here, and that little tooth will hold the cam exactly where we want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for both sides. And I think after that, we lay the timing chain on. All right, so says, yep. I'm gonna go ahead and thread these in part way. This little tooth pretty close to it. Mind you, right now the motor isn't at TDC either. So right now some of the valves are pressed Technically, it's out of time. Um, On the money. Okay. So now, swap the chain around to this side. Do the same thing. I guess you can you can turn these in the whole way and these slide uh, to not be in the way so that's cool I didn't realize you could just tie them in the whole way and then just slide this in so that's good to know all right I'm on. Yeah, looks to be one off Okay, so I'm not crazy. It says the Mark II is slightly offset to the right. So Mark II, the time mark is offset slightly to the right, and that is spot on because it is off slightly to the right. On camera it looks worse, but it's not. Right about there is how it looks in real life. This one's like spot on. So all right, next up it says to lay the chain marks where they're supposed to be. Boom, boom. And there's another one down here. You can see it. I didn't even put that there. I went right to it on its own. So that arrow right on that. Um, I believe it'll show in the picture. Maybe it won't. But you can see that there is slack there, a decent amount. But we gotta put this tensioner in first and then this top one. But you can see, um, let me just blow this up. You can see that there's a decent amount of slack between the two. So that's normal. This one's got to go in first. Then we got that. And then from there, it's like a two person kind of thing. Got to get the girlfriend out of here for this one. Okay, so remember, I was telling you guys how this is off just a little bit to the right, and how the book says that it's supposed to be. Now I figured out why. So it says I have two people for this. 
Hey, nothing wants to focus tonight, I swear. Uh, you can pause on that if you'd like. But basically, one person is going to hold the cam at the position of which the chain, like once the chain touches this tensioner, then you're gonna hold the cam there because the cam has tension, right? Uh, once, once it's not on this, it, it wants to move. So you're gonna hold it right before the chain touches, which is I'm assuming is when this mark meets that one, and then you put this other, uh, you put this guy in right there, boom, and then this has its own tensor, it's gonna push against the chain to tighten it up, so we're gonna knock that out. Sorry we don't have a third person here to record for us, so I'll try as best as I can to not be in the way, but obviously I got shit to do, so. All right, go ahead, give it some tension. Keep going, there you go. Now, release tension, keep going. Oh, okay, so it doesn't, it's not going back any further. All right, next up, ladies and gents, we got this bad boy right here, boom. Um, so it's a slide it on, it says on here, attach the bearing mount, do not tilt when doing this, hand tighten the bolts, and after that, after you hand tighten them, then you um, undo this tensioner down here. See that boom, undo this tensioner, which presses up against this and puts more tension on the chain, so. Put this on first, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, good old engine lube on there. That's y'all on Instagram right there blowing my shit up. Every time I post something, it's like fucking, I can't even keep up with the messages anymore. I literally can't. I don't have messages, notifications on for messages for Facebook or Instagram anymore, because I just can't. I spend way too much time during the day and I don't get other shit done. Anyway, my own battery's about to die. Let's hurry up and get this in. Do not tilt. Try not to tilt. Okay, it's tilted. Yo, so, trying to put this cover on. What can go on, what can go on, because you know, like the cam's gotta come through here, and there's like a journal in there, so if you're not going on straight, it might like not come through the journal right. But I was looking at it, and like it looked good. Couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. So I come on the bottom and look, and like there's, so there's a roll pin in here that's also like a guide pin, and it wasn't going up with the block. So I took a flathead, kind of pressed on the pin, and once it like got into the block, this whole, the whole thing just like sucked itself in. So, boom, says so the next step. After getting those hand tight is to remove the locking tool. Boom. And then next, I think we just make sure Oh, we tighten those to whatever spec that is. We'll put the this one in for the oil tensioner. And then we'll double check everything's good. Hopefully my camera doesn't die, but real quick, you can see number six there is this mounting sleeve. And it gets pulled in with the bolt because it's like not all the way seated. Yeah, so that... That's that. So we're looking to torque the housing, but looking at seven as well, because we gotta do those soon. Pilot valves, 35 newton meters, they're left-handed thread, so boom, got that. And we're looking for eight. We wanted to do bearing bracket. Um, I believe we have steel bolts. So page 160. So with steel bolts, it says uh, three and them, and then nine. You guys see that? Three and then nine. And it has the torquing sequence, so we'll go ahead and do that. Well, I mean, we're pretty much officially done. See the timing marks there, there, good. Everywhere down here, all the arrows point to, uh, there's one there, good, good. Where are we at? Good. Yep, we're good. So, that's all torqued down, good to go. We went ahead and put this on, took the tension off that, and all this chain's nice and tensioned, um, blah, blah, blah. Now it says, check the adjustment, which we just did, everything lines up. I saw the pilot valves, um, item seven, page 115, I already got it pulled up. So I was telling you guys a minute ago, I was just foreseeing the future, 35 newton meters, uh, let's do it. Okay, so what we have here, is the spoolie boy 
Maybe it'll focus because this thing looks really neat. Come on, there we go. Got this, I said it's left hand thread. Um, special tool for this, looks kind of odd. Kid has a bunch of different these, different ones of these that are like offset pins, but this one fits it. I actually picked the first one, the first try. Proud of myself. So these will go in. Like in the reverse thread, so lefty tighty for these ones. Grab the torque wrench here. I think I'm the 35. They go in forever. These babies go in smooth too. You can tell they're machined. Like super perfectly another W for the team got them torqued in looking real good we're gonna do a rotation here after I double check the markings are still there and then we can put the covers on